Hi everyone, my name is Kaukiman and in today's tutorial we will be going over theoretically and practically how we can achieve pair movement including movement on slopes using mathematical tools such as basis vectors as well as some vector arithmetic. By the end of this video you will be able to create something like this or adapt the system to your own game. The reason I wanted to do this tutorial is because the resources I found online for slope walking weren't as good as I had hoped, leading me to make my own system. First, we're going to go over the theoretical aspects of movement, which include a significant amount of vector arithmetic. Then we're going to go over the pseudocode, and lastly I present a demo project for Godot, which you can download and play around with and analyze for yourself. Out of scope of this tutorial are smoothing out movement with acceleration and deceleration, as well as jumping. First, we're going to go through the theoretic parts of how we can implement this. With this knowledge, you should be able to take the ideas to any game engine. The first thing we need are the inputs. We get these from the keyboard's WASD keys or from a controller's joystick. These are then converted to a 2D vector containing an X and Y value. Let's say we have the vector 0, 1, where we have 0 for the X value and 1 for the Y value, which occurs if we tilt the joystick upwards. Here, we expect our character to move forward, away from the camera. Let's take a more complex example, where we have the vector 1, 1. This happens, for example, if the player hits both the W and D keys simultaneously. In this case, we expect the player to move in a diagonal fashion, northeast from the camera. Now, we have to remember to normalize this vector. Otherwise, if we have a velocity of, say, 50, we end up going 50 steps forward and 50 steps to the right, which is not desirable, as we want to go 50 in total. If we don't normalize this vector, using Pythagoras' theorem, we end up with a total velocity of the root of 2 times 50 squared, which equates to a total velocity of 70.71. What normalization does is that it gives us a unit vector with the same direction of the current vector, which solves this issue. Then we can multiply this unit vector by our speed to get the direction. Now. In a game, we usually want to move in accordance to where the camera is rotated. Back to our 1, 1 vector, we want to achieve this motion. In order to do this, let's get the camera's current rotation and its current set basis vector to map our original character. In order to do this, let's get the camera's current rotation and use its current Z basis vector to map our original controller or keyboard base direction to our new camera defined direction. Since that's a lot of words, Let's show what we mean visually. First off, what is a basis vector? A basis vector consists of three other vectors, which we call x, y, z. Each one is a unit vector in a direction 90 degrees from each other. They will not, however, be unit vectors if the object that we have is scaled in some way. In this case, we can still use normalization to get their unit vector. When we rotate the object for whom these basis vectors belong to, in our case the camera, the basis vector will change accordingly. From this animation you might already be able to tell that this will be very useful to us. What we can do is grab the camera's Z basis vector, or what it is more commonly known as the forward vector, and multiply this by our Y input, which is, consequently, the direction we wish to move forwards. Then we can grab our camera's X vector, also known as the right vector, and multiply this by our x input. This results in a direction based on the camera's rotation. Since the camera will be looking at our player, this will give us the correct movement. However, if the camera is rotated, this will end up giving us a y value that is not 0, so we will squash this vector by setting the y value to 0, then normalize to get back our unit vector. Lastly, we can multiply our speed and bam! We have our basic movement. Then we can make the player look at the direction he's going so that he faces that direction. Most game engines have a look at function and we can grab the current player position and add the direction he's moving to and use the up vector to rotate around. Now let's move on to player movement on a slope. In our game we probably want to make levels more interesting with slopes. However, there is a caveat. If we move forward up slopes we might end up walking slower. Meanwhile, if we move down slopes, we end up moving forward, then falling down. I like to call this staircase movement. If we have a landing animation, we end up with a very jarring result. 
In order to deal with this, we can use a ray to detect if we are on the ground or not. I like to put this ray in the middle of the player and shoot it downwards, such that it goes a bit lower than the player's lowermost position. If we are not on the ground, we apply some downwards motion. Using some sort of acceleration is a good idea as it provides a better gameplay experience. Using this ray, and the ground's normal vector, we can apply a proper velocity factor which takes the slope into account. Here, you can see the ray shot by the player in blue and the ground's normal ray in green. Thus, what we need to do is rotate our previous direction vector towards the new normal, using the angle that this normal vector makes with the up vector. However, how do we determine the vector we rotate around? When we rotate a vector, we pass two values, the angle of rotation, which we can get using built-in functions of our engine and passing our two vectors, and we also need to pass the vector that we rotate around. The reason for our second parameter is that given an angle, we can rotate a vector in 3D space in an infinite number of directions. We can get this vector that we rotate around by taking the cross product of our two vectors. The cross product gives us the vector which is at 90 degrees to both our vectors. Now, what if the angle is too steep? In this case, after calculating the angle between the up vector and the normal, we can simply say that this is not within our valid range and say that our player is not grounded, thus allowing him to fall. Like previously, we can now have our player face in the direction that he is moving. If you are skilled at this, you can also try using inverse kinematics to bend the legs instead. I have personally not attempted this yet, however, if someone has any good resources on implementing inverse kinematics properly, please do share them in the comments below. Now, we are going to look at the pseudocode to implement our slope movement. For inputs, we have the grounding ray attached to the player and the speed variable. Firstly, we can get the input from our input device. Next, we convert this to camera relative space by multiplying the camera's basis vectors as discussed previously and removing any vertical velocity. Don't forget to normalize this value, which we then store in a separate vector which we call direction. Next, we shoot our ray cost. If this collides with a ground object and the object is at an angle which is not too steep, then we say that the character is grounded and put the player on the ground. Then we find the normal vector of the ground and find the cross product that the player makes with this normal vector. A quick note about cross products, if we find the cross products of two parallel lines, this results in zero. Therefore, if the player is already rotated facing in accordance with the ground, then we do not need to rotate him. Furthermore, in computing it is very common to have some rounding errors when using floating point values. Hence, the player might end up being slightly not parallel with the ground, leading to a very small cross product. For example, some number times 10 to the power of minus 13. Thus, we set a threshold, so rather than checking that the cross product is equal to 0, we check that it is below some very small number. Then, we need to rotate the player. We rotate him by the angle that his current y basis vector makes with the normal vector along the cross product calculated earlier. Remember to normalize the vector that we rotate along, or some very weird results will occur. Finally, we rotate the direction vector by the angle that the up vector makes along the normal of the ground, along the cross product of the up vector and that normal vector. In the case that the grounding ray is not colliding, this means that the player is not on the ground platform. That is, he is falling downwards. In this case, we also want to align the player so that he is not rotated in any way. Hence, we use the same technique as before to rotate the player, except that this time we use the up vector as the normal instead of the ground's normal vector. We will also want to rotate the player so that he is facing the direction that he is moving. And this was it! In the description you will find the link to a GitHub repository where I will post some tutorial projects from now on. In this last part of the video I will explain the contents of this project. The folder for this project is called Player Movement. First off, we have three scripts. The first is the input manager, which reads our inputs from our devices and is made to be used with both mouse and keyboard as well as a controller. While you could go through this, I plan on doing an advanced tutorial on creating an input manager in the future. Next is the basic camera. In the scene, you will see that I have a spatial node containing a camera which is pushed back on the Z axis. The script is attached to the spatial node and what this does is it takes input from the input manager and rotates the camera. This code is not so long so you should be able to go through it, however, again, you don't need to. When I get better at cameras, I will try my hardest to do a good video on them as they are quite the challenge to get right. 
Lastly is the script of interest, which contains all our player functionality and is very similar to the pseudocode we have discussed previously in this video. I have also put in a player object with a nose so that you may know the direction he is facing, as well as a test world which you may use to, well, test. Here you can see me moving on a ball, which is considered as a ground object, and when the angle is too steep, the character falls down. Rest in peace. Thank you for watching and I hope this helped you if you were struggling with this issue. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. Have a wonderful day.